In our previous video, we talked about the definition of a measure. We saw that if we had a set X with a sigma algebra M, then we would define a measure as a function mu that went from the sigma algebra into the zero infinity. And this function would be a measure if it satisfied two things. The first thing was that mu of the empty set, the measure of the empty set was zero. And the second one was that if we have a sequence of elements in our sigma algebra that are disjoint, then the measure of the union is equal to the sum of the measures. And now we're going to work with an example that's called Dirac measure, also called point mass measure. And this measure can be defined on any set X with the sigma algebra M equals parts of X. So the sigma algebra has every subset of X. And what we do is we let X0 in X. So this X0 will be just a fixed element. And then we define the measure and Instead of mu, the usual letter is called delta. It's usually delta with a subindex x0. Delta of any set E. So we have any set E in our sigma algebra or in parts of x. Dirac's measure of this set E will be 1 or 0, depending on if this set E has our element x, x0 or not. So it's going to be 1 if x0 is an element of the set and 0 if it's not. So basically what I like to picture when I think of this measure is like this. We have our space. This is our space x. And there's just this tiny point, x0, that in a way, it just weights so much. So it's like up here, and all the other points are at 0. But this one measures 1. So anytime you grab a subset of x, something like this, if the subset contains the x0, then the measure will be 1. But if the subset doesn't grab x0, then its measure will be 0. But if the subset doesn't grab x0, then its measure will be 0. Okay, so this is the measure, or this is the function we've defined. Now we have to prove that it actually is a measure. We have to prove that it satisfies these two properties I mentioned. Delta of the empty set is 0. And delta of the countable union of these joint sets is the sum of the measures of each set. Okay, so let's start with the most easy one. What is the delta of the empty set? X0 is not an element of the empty set because the empty set has no elements. So then that brings us to this part in the definition and we can actually say, okay, the measure of the empty set is indeed zero. And now let's go ahead and prove the second property. And for this, we're going to take E sub J, a countable sequence in our sigma algebra. Again, our sigma algebra is part of X. But for the second property, we need more. We need that these sets have to be disjoint. And then all we have to do is work with some cases. Well, what happens if x0 is in the union of all these sets? Now, because these sets are disjoint, then there exists a unique E of j that has x0, okay, because they're disjoint, so if any two sets would have x0, they wouldn't be disjoint. So if one of them contains it, if x is in the union, then there exists a set that 
has it, but that set has to be the only one because they are all disjoint. And now we said that x0 is in the union, so from this we get that the measure of the union, delta x0 of the union, is 1, because the union of e sub j is just another set that has the element x0. And from the definition, here we have that if the set contains x0, then the measure is 1. But now there is only one e sub j that has x0. So, well, for this e sub j, we will have that the delta of e sub j for this one is 1 also, because it has the element x0. And for the rest, I'm just gonna change the index so we know it's a different j. The delta of e sub i, it has to be 0 for i different to j. So, as this is the only one that has the element x0, its measure is 1. But all the rest don't have x0. So, their measures will be 0. And so, when we do the sum from, say, i equals 1 to infinity of the delta of each of these sets, it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0 until we get to the one that has x0. And in this one, it will give us 1 and all the rest 0. So, the sum is actually 1. So, these two things are equal. Delta of the union is equal to the sum of the deltas, and it's equal to 1. So, again, let's check the second property. It says, you have a sequence of disjoint sets, then the measure of the union is the sum of the measures. And that's exactly what we just got here for the delta. These two things are equal. So, we are fine, delta x0 satisfies the second property as well, and then we can finally say that delta x0 is a measure.